Since the first watch escapements were invented, watchmakers have been battling magnetism. Magnetism can affect a watch in such a way that it's no longer accurate. And it can be sudden. The time can be perfect one moment, and then in five minutes, it's off by 20 minutes. It happens very quick, and it is a dramatic change in the timekeeping accuracy of a mechanical wristwatch. There are only a few things that are outside influences that affect a mechanical watch movement. One of the main things that we battle today is magnetism. Magnetism changes the characteristics of the metal parts that are affected by magnets. It could be the hairspring that is affected by slight magnetism, something that is outside the watch, maybe a magnetic field that is near the timepiece, pulling on that hairspring a certain way, or pushing. It changes the way that hairspring an escapement operates. But as soon as you move away from that magnet, timekeeping will come back to the same accuracy you had before. Those are minor magnetic fields that can cause temporary changes in the accuracy of your timepiece. The biggest problem with magnetism is not having a magnet nearby that causes a loss of accuracy temporarily, but if the parts inside of your watch actually become magnets themselves, if a strong enough magnet interacts with certain materials, it can actually magnetize those materials. So the little steel screws and steel pinions, even the hairsprings, they can actually become magnets themselves. And if they become a magnet, then you will always have magnetism in your watch. That is until you demagnetize it. Some scenarios where I see watches becoming magnetized often when traveling. Airplane travel requires pretty strict security nowadays. And metal detectors, x-ray equipment, all of these machines use very strong magnets. And they can oftentimes magnetize the pieces that are inside of your watch. And if that happens, you won't just see a loss of accuracy while you're going through security. You'll probably arrive at your destination and your watch will be wildly off. Could be hours off. And this is because parts inside of your watch are now magnets themselves. All this means is that the structure of the material has been aligned in such a way that there is a polarity with that component. And what we need to do is reorganize them. Make it so that it's random again. And this will bring the material back to a state where it is no longer magnetic. And then the timekeeping should go right back to the way it was. So in every watchmaker's workshop, you're gonna find a little electronic device that's called a demagnetizer. And all this device does is reorganize the electrons in the metal so that they are no longer magnetic. I have here at my workbench a rare earth magnet, which is very strong. I use this one to magnetize metal. I also use it to extract metal pins from certain watch parts. That magnet, by dragging it along a steel part, can actually align the electrons in such a way that you create another magnet. I can do that with a screwdriver blade, and then I can actually pick up steel screws, and they'll stick to my screwdriver blade. 
Now in watchmaking, we don't really want that because if every screw I touch, I possibly magnetize it. When I put that screw into a watch, there will be some magnetism in that movement. And if I go and I regulate the escapement and time it out, well, if we then demagnetize it, it could change the rate. It's an exterior influence on the timekeeping components of the watch. So we want to eliminate that factor, which is why in a watchmaker's workshop, we demagnetize all the parts before we assemble them. And we'll actually demagnetize them again once a movement is assembled. And then if we see certain timing issues arise over the life of a timepiece, one of the first things that we can check on a timing machine are some of those symptoms of magnetization. And if we see those, we can very quickly, without much work, take the watch right over to a demagnetizer and demagnetize it while it's still sealed up. Then we can check the rate again and see if some of those symptoms have disappeared. Magnetism in a watch usually shows up as an amplitude deviation, so poor amplitude, uh, meaning the balance wheel is not swinging as far as it should be, or if you're to think of it like a clock, that would mean the pendulum is not swinging as far to either side as would be ideal. And from there, you'll notice massive timing errors depending on how magnetized the timepiece is. And sometimes even with really extreme cases of magnetism, the hairspring will simply stick to itself and it won't allow the watch to run for more than a couple of seconds. But rest assured, it's only temporary. Just as easily as we can magnetize a watch by going through security equipment at an airport or being near MRI equipment or other uh, scientific research equipment that uses strong magnets, we can very quickly demagnetize as well. One of the ways that watchmakers and designers are combating the magnetism is by using a shield a shield underneath your standard case back, which actually will help block any magnetic field from reaching the movement within. This works up to a certain point, but there are industrial magnets around us that are powerful enough to get through that shield. So the next step is to use silicon. Silicon will not be magnetized. So a silicon escapement or silicon hairspring in a movement will actually make it not affected by magnetism. So this is the one surefire way to avoid a magnetized hairspring or magnetism outside of a watch affecting a hairspring. As a watchmaker, I see the benefit of silicon hairsprings, and I do think that silicon hairsprings have a place. The downside to a silicon hairspring is that it's not a traditional watchmaking material. And it's not something that a classically trained watchmaker will be able to reproduce themselves. In order to make a silicon hairspring, it requires silicon wafers and equipment to cut or etch those silicon wafers. And you cannot manipulate the hairspring after it's been made. So any problem in the manufacturing process cannot be corrected by a watchmaker. That hairspring is simply recycled and only the good hairsprings will be installed in watches. What this means is that a watchmaker cannot look at a silicon hairspring and see a problem and then fix it without getting a new silicon hairspring. 
So this is where I kind of feel like a traditional white alloy hairspring has merit still because of the traditional aspect of the material where a watchmaker can actually sit down and make a replacement spring. We can modify other springs. We can correct problems with a damaged spring. There are lots of options for repair and restoration when you have a white alloy or a steel hairspring. The downside to a metal hairspring like that is that they are affected by magnetism. So that's why I think that as a watch collector, both a silicon hairspring and a white alloy hairspring are important and valuable and good for watchmaking. But I think for a traditionalist who wants to collect watches that are showcasing traditional watchmaking should think about investing in some relatively inexpensive equipment in order to demagnetize and check their watches. Because then you can enjoy a traditional hairspring as if it was a silicon hairspring without any of the downsides. There's very few things that you can easily and quickly fix on a mechanical watch at home. Magnetism is one of them. So why not invest in a couple of small tools that will help you be your own watchmaker to take care of your own timepieces? As a watch collector or enthusiast, there's not a whole lot of work you can do on your own watches, but checking the rate and demagnetizing them is a really great way to be a little more hands-on with your watch and to understand a little bit more about the accuracy, the timekeeping, and the materials in your watch. Mm -hmm.